go, uh, sorry, YouTube Live, I'm ready to go to Facebook Live now. Let's see. Hi, it's Bernie Sleeman. Thanks for joining me on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And thanks as always to the sponsors, Galaxy Blinds, Adventure Tele Solutions, Cornerstone, GRS Installation, Dovecot, Playblade Systems Engineering, Ultimate Windows, Ocean Lighting, and TGM Cars. And thanks each and every one of them. Uh, the team tonight for the EFL Cup game uh, was Glover and Goal, Brian Fry, McNairn Smith, McGree, Hackney, Beleza, Silvera, Rogers, and Latty Lath. Um, on the bench was Jones, well there was two Joneses, uh, Gilbert, Housen, Coburn, Lenihan, Engel and McCabe. The start level was Glover O'Brien, Fry McNair, Smith, McGree, Hackney, Beleza, Silvera, Rogers and Latty Laff. Seven changes in total from the game on Saturday against Southampton. I personally, me personally, I'd have kept the same team. It's easy to say what you'd have did after the event, but we won 2-0, we'll come to in a minute. Um, I would have kept the same team. Why? Because we've only won... One game in eight. I was wanting to hopefully play the same team, but momentum for Saturday's away trip to Watford. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so well done, Borough. Uh, by all accounts, I was listening to National Radio, I was messing about, didn't see it, didn't watch it. Oh, it's only two games I've missed in years, many years. Um, by all accounts, uh, National Radio, they go around the grounds, 60 odd minutes, Borough were in total control. Uh, Latty Laff got a goal after 21 minutes, one in one situation, put it away. And then McGree played in Rogers. Rogers finished it off well and it ended up 2 0. I mean, that's three games in the cup. I mean, cups are important for confidence, or to rotate your squad, fitness levels. But, you know, you can start your way and end up in the quarter and semi finals here. I mean, we've had three games all the way through home. We've had Huddersfield, Bolton, and Bradford tonight. I mean, Bradford League Division 2 side, I expected to win tonight, irrespective of who we played. As I say, my... Um, it would build momentum and hopefully get likes of Coburn on that in the score sheet. Um, right, Carrick's it. He's the guy in charge. Well done, Borough. Great to be delighted. It's no burn on the, the, the league whatsoever. But, um, yeah, I want to progress. Don't forget, I've only won one trophy in my history. Uh, Mohammed said, Yes, Bernie Joseph Slavin, I'm on the way home from the game. It's all about league for me. That is important. Mohammed, safe journey back to you and the travelling borough faithful. I've got a few mates away tonight. It's only down the road like an hour away. Uh, yeah, well done. And the league's paramount. We know that. But we're only eight league games in. Um, so, I mean, if we were. 38 league games and I think oh, we'll give the lads a rest but we're only 8 games in anyway Carrick did what he, he's got told him to and we've come out on top and we progress it in the next round let's hope we can for 3 games all the way from home uh, Chris hi Chris hi Bernie uh, this should go down uh, this should go with Coburn and Latte up front 2 strikers and we get more goals big man holds it up for Smaller, quick man, good result tonight again. Chris, you know, I, I says that Saturday. I know Crooks has been up there, but for me, Latty Laugh, the manual Latty Laugh uh, in Coburn, I think that's that's the next in line to get a go. I would think. Uh, I, would, I think that could be a good um, a good partnership. I don't know how ruthless. I don't know how ruthless um, young Coburn's still a, a rough diamond. He scored a few goals last year. Not his account this year, limited appearances, been in loan, we missed about, was going to get shipped out in loan again. But I think he could grow in confidence with the more we play him. And he gives us a different outlet, a different dimension. Uh, Phil Otten says, uh, all about momentum, Bernard. Don't buy into this getting dumped out early doors and concentrating the league. The cup is important for confidence. Phil, exactly. I've never been kidded by it. Never, ever been kidding with it. It's a cop-out. It's an excuse if we get beat, you say, oh, well, concentrate in the league. We've been knocked out the cup early doors in the last few years. And we're still stuck in the league over the years. Check it out. It's no burn whatsoever. As I say, I, I, if I was carry, I would have stuck the same team as Saturday. We've only won one in eight. One league game in eight. I thought, a good idea, play the same team. I'm sure all the lads would have, would have accepted it. 
the younger lads and the fringe players would have said, you know what, fair enough, I get what you're trying to do. Build momentum. Um, anyway, Saturday we'll find out what happened Saturday. But um, well done tonight. Let's concentrate on tonight. Well done the Borough tonight. Uh, great result. And by all accounts, as I say, National Radio, they're going on the grounds. They went uh, to the Borough game a couple of times down at Bradford. And the uh, the guy who was reporting says, Borough total domination, more or less. Lati Laugh scored, uh, scored a second. They came in late on, but too much too late. Uh, we need to do this in the league. Start moving up the table. Agpom move has turned into a nightmare. Uh, Ajax, let's uh, for Howard. I would try and get him back in January. Yeah, I think he had trouble with his, obviously, his initial getting his, um, the, the clearance, whatever, over there. And then there's been, I think it was a bit of nonsense with the fans recently, I think he'd been on the bench, so yeah, he's not had a great start. Dave Saunders says, hi Bernie, hiya Dave, uh, a good cup run is good to build momentum for the team, and now four points out of two games, and into the third round up the borough. Good for momentum, good for confidence. Uh, his wages would be out of our league, Colin Fry, yeah, I think his wages now ain't going to come back, let's be honest, we're, we're living in cuckoo land. Uh, how did Luton do asking for a friend? <laughs> yeah, Timmy, um, I heard that national radio as well. They're out, aren't they? Luton Town, Premier League club, the ones that went up last season from our league. Out. Back-to-back uh, -back wins on to Watford. Hopefully it gives us confidence going into the Watford game. Well, no, it'll give us confidence because we've won again. But, you know, there was um, seven changes tonight. So I expect to seven to come back in. Uh, looking at the team, there was um, O'Brien, McGree, Hackney and Fry. Those were the ones that played on Saturday. They played tonight. That was it. The rest were um, fringe players. Uh, what for game? Nice to get a big name home draw in the next round. How nice would that be? Getting a big team. Man United, they, they won tonight, didn't they? They walloped uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, Daniel Wilkins says, Mohammed, uh, the start to his Borough career was a mere two. But look how it panned out. Yeah, mean a nightmare. Uh, he'll be grafting to get into the, the side 100%. I think without a doubt, Daniel, I think, uh, I mean, I remember interviewing him last season, Chuba, when he achieved the 20 goal target, league goal. Um, and he was a, a very grounded lad. He, he was ambitious. He knows that it's took his time in getting there, but he's at his pomp now. He's 28. He's at his peak. He's experienced. He's not a young kid now. And uh, I think he'll knuckle down and he'll give it his best shot over there. Uh, Con says, let's get Exeter at home next round. They knocked out Luton. Ha ha. Yeah, Exeter beat Luton, so it's a big shocker. Uh, Pamela Tumble, hi Pamela, hi Bernie. A uh, great result. League is important, but getting goals in the cup gives them confidence going forward. Uh, Latte, Laugh, and Coburn could be a great combination. Time will tell. Carrick did the right thing, resting a few ready for Saturday. See, Pamela, I, 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 about what you're saying, but I don't necessarily agree. You know, when you say, um, did the right thing, resting a few. Resting a few. We never kicked our asses for seven games. We've only won one. We've had a rest. The season just got underway. And we've had an awful start and a dreadful start. So you can look at it both ways. I look at it the other way. You know, call me old fashioned, but I would, I would have stuck to the same team. I say it's hypothetical now, it's gone, we've won. Uh, but yeah, we, we need to bring confidence in the first teamers, let alone giving the, 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 the fringe players a go. We need to get their confidence up, which is all well and good, but we need the first team confidence up. Don't think we've turned the corner because we've won one game. If we won the next eight games, that's called turning the corner. But we've still got a bit to do. Uh, Leslie says, see you. Stokes a fair Wednesday night with a big lad. I know a few big lads, Leslie. Um, I'm surprised I've never seen you, Leslie. You only see me get about and notice big lads. Uh, Stokes and Fred, yeah, I didn't get a goal. Football's a funny old game, Bernie. At the moment, we can say he is not coming back, but never say Well, of course that, but I, I can't see it. We couldn't afford these wages. Obviously, we don't have them. Uh, Paul says, Coburn up top with Lattie Laugh behind for me. I would go with that. Uh, seen enough of Crooks in the number 10 role, and he is a walk. 
but it's not his role and ineffective for me. I agree with that, Phil. I think um, Crutcher on the right is an effective player. When he first joined us, he was put out there. He, <coughs> excuse me, he was up and down that flank, helping out defensively, getting forward. <coughs> excuse me, getting on the end of things. And yeah, for me, uh, Latty Laugh, what, we're signing for five million. He's one of the few signed over the summer for a few quid, so it's about time we started playing him. Is that his second goal of the season? Bring on Newcastle at home, Alan Martin. Alan, are we being serious here? <laughs> I'd love nothing better to get Newcastle and bring them here, but dear God, did you not see them at the weekend? It was just the eight one. Eight. Again, Sheffield United. Wow. Eight. I don't think professional teams, no matter who you're playing, I don't think professional teams should be eight. Especially in the top flight. No matter who you're playing. There should be enough uh, experience and, and nous from professional footballers to come out and say, listen, we've let five and we ain't letting any more. You know what I mean? Uh, but eight nil. Uh, Timmy China, Timmy, you think now Carrick uh, has his team, Bernie? I mean, Saturday's lineup. Oh, I think without a doubt, I think the, the team that started Saturday, I wouldn't be surprised. I know we're saying Latty Lanford Crooks. He might make one adjustment, but I, I can't see uh, a lot of changes this Saturday. You know, seven tonight, he'd phone Saturday gone. The game before that, he'd five. Carrick knows he needs a settled team for success. That's the only way for me he's going to get success. You look at the team I played when I first came. We had a small squad, don't he? Lack of money. Just come out of bankruptcy and liquidation. I know we're talking about the dark days and the dark ages. Um, but there's a lot to be said for a small squad. When you're trying to juggle everybody and keep everybody happy, um, it becomes a problem. But I think Carrick needs to get his best team in his head, start playing it, let it roll, be consistent, get to learn each other's makeup on a, in, in a weekly basis and... Uh, Start grinding at the results. I mean, if we go away to walk on the Saturday and win, that'd be fantastic. That'd be two league wins. Brilliant. And we're still in the cup. That'd be some booster. A draw, I'd have to say, it's still a good draw away from home. Uh, I don't think uh, the last away game uh, was a great draw, but away draws are usually uh, classed as good ones. Uh, Chris Chapman says, great result tonight, Bernie. I hope it continues on Saturday against Watford. Up the border. Obviously, we're all hoping and praying, Chris. You're right. Uh, like laugh, always think of a drink at Costa. Uh, Kevin Neal says, just sat watching you and my Bradford to tell Bernie. So my performance tonight, uh, done enough. Any news on this dead, dear God, this Kev uh, is any he's, he's possessed this Kev Neal. He's obviously a massive Borough fan, contributes regular, always gets the name just dead in. Always read it, I could bin it, but it's pretty funny. But uh, Kev, are you that lazy? I oh, probably have had a few drinks, you're staying over. You that, you've got a few quid, kid. It's only, it's only uh, what, an hour away, Bradford. I could have jogged back. Uh, Jacob Pinkster says, Hey, Bernie, we put eight past Man City. Yeah, we did. We did. Many years ago was that, but Jacob, we're talking here now. Yeah, we did. I remember that. Uh, that's when uh, we played, and, and the younger viewers saying, Eight now against Man City. Middlesbrough, but I was doing the commentary. Uh, with a late great Alan Brown, we could dress them. And um, Sven Goran Eriksson, who obviously England manager, uh, he was Man City manager and he'd been told he's off. So he was on his way anyway. He knew that before the end of the game. Then they had the centre half sent off. And uh, Alves, not Elvis, Alves, £12 million from here in Vien, who was a flop for Middlesbrough. £12 million quid done this funny. Uh, he, he got a hat trick that day. Uh, Matt Ranson says, hopefully the same results on Saturday. Well, let's hope so. Um, we'll keep them coming in. Uh, I've got a few to read anyway. Uh, love a cup run. Why can't we win it? Who was the best player tonight, Billy? I wasn't there. I can't give you the best player out at all. I'm, I'm an honest lad. I just heard that on national radio they were going round the grounds uh, sporadically. Went round Bradford a few times and... The, the, the commentator, who's a, a neutral, uh, not a biased Blinkford Borough fan, says that Borough were in total control for 60 minutes. Lighty last scored a fine goal, one and one. Rogers scored a second, and uh, Bradford came in it in the last half hour, but too much too late. So, um, yeah, 
But well done. And, and Borough fans, how important is it to you uh, to progress the cup? We've only won one cup in the history. Over 150 years. One trophy. Carling Cup. You remember it? In Wales. Against Bolton. Big Sam Allardyce was the manager, wasn't he? Did we lose the first goal? My memory's serving right. And then we went on and won it. That was a great day. I remember the roof closing. I remember uh, there was a guy dressed in whatever, coming out with the cup. I think it was an army lad carrying the cup. Steve Gibson, the chairman, was there. Um, all the fireworks were going off. The players were on the podium. There was grown men crying. That's how much it meant at the time. We can't just dismiss it. We Middlesbrough. You put a fans and say, oh, forget that, concentrate league. It's a load of pants. You know, you're kidding yourselves on. You'd love to win the cup. Let's see if we get the semi-finals. Let's see how many goes if it's Old Trafford or City or whoever. Let's see how many he's got here. Let's see how many if we got to the final would be queuing up for Wembley. If it doesn't, if you if you're not into it, then don't buy into it. But of course you're into it. You know how much it means. As I say, those that just write it off when we get beat is a cop out. Uh, double kick and apparently he's ending. Yeah, remember that? Ball is ending, ran up, hit it, and, and, and one leg hit the ball off the other. A good evening. With all uh, all those changes, do you think I had problems with the team for Saturday, Keith Watson? Uh, I don't think it'll cause problems, but it might have no burn on Saturday whatsoever. You know, if we went out tonight with the same team from Saturday, who won my first league game in eight, uh, and went in tonight, banged in three, four, five goals, and a few of them get a goal, a couple of goals, then we get in Saturday full of confidence. A rest, one thing, but do we really need a rest? As I say, we had seven games with the rest. Uh, big week coming up now, first three games, week of the season, walk for the way, Cardiff home, then Sunderland away. I reckon we will get seven points. Seven points. What's that, VB production? Seven points. Seriously. I hope you're right. I hope we get nine, but... Uh, Love Job thought he was a good player. Harley gets a mention. Dean Wilson talked about Joseph Job. Uh, I remember the late, great Harley used to say, just a job. Joseph Job, you remember Joseph Job? Yeah, he was a, he was a, a quick player. He scored a few goals. I think he was laid back. With a few of those, like... No, but he, he looked as if he was, he'd never get ruffled. He was just a... A, a cool character. Um, let me read a few of these out. Uh, what's that? Yusuf Burra. Oh, is that Yusuf the Burra fan? Uh, what was it? Is Yusuf Burra? Ha ha. Yusuf the Burra fan. Yusuf, I still want to talk to you. I'd like to have a chat with Yusuf. Talking about the Burra. He's a London boy. He comes up here, supports the Burra. He's... He's heavily involved, stands behind the goal, he's very animated and loves the club. Uh, I seen you carry a goldfish, Bernie. It was Thursday, not Wednesday, and big call, I believe. No, there was no goldfish. I, I didn't get a goldfish. Uh, nice to see, hopefully, things starting to come right. Well done, lads. Well, don't forget, we've progressed. This is the third game we've played in the Cup. The first two we won. Um, Against Huddersfield, we won 3-2 away and then 3-1 away at Bolton. So we've done it before. It's still fought in the league. Now we've won in the league. Won tonight. So let's hope we can kick on and, and get another point of three uh, on Saturday. Um, Chris Andrews says, keep the same team from Saturday from League One. Only thing, one change is two, uh, thing I change is two up top. But we know... We play one man up front. So for me, Coburn keeps his place. I think Coburn's a definite. Uh, will definitely keep his place on Saturday. I'd be shocked and horrified if he didn't. The kid did everything on Saturday. Walked his socks off, battled, scrapped, physical presence, helped his teammates, set up one or two um, chances. Uh, I don't think for a minute he won't be in the team. McGree will definitely be in the team. I know he sort of disappeared a few weeks ago, but he's back in now and he's in form. And I think... Carrick would be a fool, would be at his pill if he was to drop him. Um, let's see, sorry about that. Uh, good support tonight, Bernie. Alec, we doy doy. Yeah, as I say, I'd, I'd, I'd reckon, was well, there a couple of thousand there, uh, Alec? As I say, a few of my mates are away. They're down there, made the journey. 
as they do regular. I take my hat off to I take my hat off to all the fans that that travel the country, you know, and delve into the the wallets or the banks or money are hidden under the bed and or sell their telly and to to get to support Middlesbrough. I think that's what some of the fans do. They've did that for years. Big steal of borrow money tickets to get to see the beloved team. Uh, Michael Burnison says, we all know Carrick is going to play Crooks as a 10 again at the weekend. Probably. But evening, 4,000 we attended tonight. Good stuff. Is that Louis here? Is that 4,000? Incredible support. That's what I mean. So if, it, if the cup doesn't matter to you, a lot of you, why is the 4,000 Borough fans travelling to Bradford in a midweek game? That's, a, that's an amazing amount of, of fans. 4,000 going to cheer the Borough on tonight in the EFL Cup. Um, for third game in it, as I say, Huddersfield with 1 3 2, Bolton with 1 3 1. Tonight, if you're just joining, you don't know, we beat Bradford 2 0. Um, yeah, so we, we move on to the next round. Let's hope it's a home tie. Let's hope it's kind. Colin Fry says over 15,000 fans at Bradford tonight, 4,000 Borough fans. Is that where they get 15,000? So we took 4,000, 15,000 crowd. That's a good crowd for the EFL. You know, the League Cup, some people, the big club's written it off and then they take it seriously again. And uh, Do you think Forrest will end up uh, with Hayden? Hope not. As for Carl Smoggy Morin. No, I've not heard anything about that as well. Look, talk's cheap and everybody's full of rumours and bull. Uh, Hackney, no doubt, is, is under the microscope. There'll be opposing teams looking at his age and his... Uh, what he's all about and his qualities. Um, but I, I'm sure people will, will be admiring them, but we'd be fools to sell anybody or let anybody like Hayden Hackney go this season. I know we're a selling club and down the line that it's inevitable if he keeps playing well, he, he'll eventually move on. Uh, Demo says, Bernie, who do you think our best pair of centre halves are? It's a tough question, that, uh, Dean. Brian Lennon's been number ones. Big Paddy was a fine centre half over the years. Then he lost his way, and then he put midfield, then he played in the right, then he played in the three. Um, and he's, he's he played tonight, but he's on the bench. He, 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 he's been on the bench in the league games. Um, I think it's a tough one. I don't really know. I don't think Carrie knows. I really don't think he knows. Who would you play, Dean? I'll ask you the question. Who, who would you play? You know, a lot of people say to me, oh, uh, Dale Fry's like Pallister. Come on. Those who say that, I've never seen Pallister. Not because he's my mate. I know what Pallister, what he was all about and how he played. He was elegant, he was stylish, carried the ball out, picked passes galore, forward passes. Um, great in the air, good height, comfortable on the ball. Score the odd goal. There's no comparisons. The only comparison is both are set halves. And that's no, that's no, um, have you got Dale? But Dale's his own player, but to, to, though, those over the last couple of years that say there's similarities to Parker. Nonsense. Nonsense. 4,000 butter just over. Yes, Chris Andrew, brilliant. Pamela Turnbull, I was due to have a baby um, on the 4th of the 2nd, 2004. Joseph Jobs scored and my water's broke. <laughs> my daughter's called, is it Freya? Freya, F-R-E-Y-A. But Josephine was on the cards. Could go all the way, another cup success on her 20th anniversary at the Borough. Good story that, Pamela. So if you've just joined us, Pamela Turnbull, Borough fan. She was due to have a baby on the 4th of the 2nd, 2004. Joseph Job scored. And her water's broke. She's pregnant. Her water's broke. And she had a daughter. Um, ended up Josephine. It was going to be daughter. It's called Freya. But Josephine was on the cards. <laughs> Fear me. Brilliant. Uh, Nick Henderson is saying, any of the players that stepped uh, into the world they are staying in the next game? Thinking Tommy Smith for me. Um, but Van der Berg has really impressed. Well, Vanderburg's a centre-half per trade. 
as far as I know, and he'd been playing on the on the right. Uh, sorry, he'd been playing full back. Um, I don't know. I've never seen him at centre back yet, so I'd like to see him at centre back. But I think Thomas Smith for me, but Van der Berg is really impressed. I've really, imp really impressed. You must be easily pleased, Nick. I've seen a couple of times. It looks okay, but nothing to go overboard about. You know, I've only seen him a couple of games. I've given a guy a good, a good dozen games before I really start um, giving my true opinion. But yeah, he's he's out of position at the minute. Um, never played tonight. But he wasn't even on the bench. Now I'm looking at the team here. Uh, well, Brian Smith. No, he wasn't even on the bench tonight. Uh, Chris Chapman, Carlin Cup scores were job first, Zend and Penley, that was it. Yeah, Joseph Job got the first, we, we mentioned that there. Uh, Bolo Zend was the penalty when he ran up, kicked it and hit his other leg and went in. Uh, Bolton was Kevin Davies, Kevin Davies, I remember Kevin Davies, he was a fine forward. He was a handful, strong lad, blonde hair, strong, led the line well. Daniel Jones says, great win for the Borough tonight, bring on what from Saturday. We all agree with that. Paul Chew says, John O'Groats Reds there next Tuesday. Have I missed something out there, uh, Paul? Is that John O'Groats Reds there next Tuesday? Um, Ipswich speak World 3 2, and we're losing 2 0. Graham Madison says, hopefully, Bernie Carrick has learnt from. Um, what happened at Luton last year when he rested players and we lost momentum going into the playoffs? Same team Saturday, momentum is vital in any sport. Well, I said that, Graham, I said that for weeks. I said it until the end of last season. I said it into this season after a couple of defeats that uh, Michael Carrick, um, the team blew up after they started changing things down at Luton. For those that don't know, we played Luton, uh, both Luton and Middlesbrough last season. Um, had qualified for the playoffs, both rested players. I think they rested one or two, we rested four, five, maybe we've even been six, but Ashbomb was one of them, and we never ever recovered. And it took into this season, chopping and changing, not working. Saturday, the team, if there's any change, I think one maximum, I don't think you can afford to do four, five or six again. I think they're looking for trouble if that was the case. And I think after Saturday, I think he's a bit more confidence now, Michael Carrick. Uh, give Carrick time, he'll get his back in the Premiership, guaranteed, Bernie. Glenn Ball, dear me, it's amazing what a win does, isn't it, Glenn? Half a T-side had us relegated with 39 games before Saturday's game, still to go. Um, no, uh, I wouldn't need, Premiership's not even in my mind. Top six not even in my mind, if I'm brutally honest. I'm the one to blow with the wind, carried away. Uh, I hope you're right uh, hopefully he does get in the Premier League but if he doesn't this season dear God he's been given the knighthood Lennon the McNair Dean Monson says Lennon McNair but we've not seen Lennon McNair have we really it's Lennon and Dale Fry Matt Wilson says another one Bernie heading back to Teesside happy uh, says Johnny Mark um, can't wait for the walk for the way on Saturday from Martin Jojo, another fantastic away following from the Borough Faithful. Yeah, Mark, I heard there was 4,000. Couldn't get it on my TV, so uh, I just sat doing a bit of painting and doodling and uh, I had um, the national radio on, it was around the ground, so I, I was keeping up with speed with what was happening in Middlesbrough. And by all accounts, 60 odd minutes, we totally controlled affairs, grabbed two goals and in the next round. And let's hopefully, for guys like yourself, Mark, who's been delving into the pockets, three away games in, in succession and the cup. Let's hope we get a home tie. Uh, home tie, Bernie, in the next round. Daniel, there would be nice. Fry McNair, best centre half for me. So Chris Andrews saying Fry McNair. I'd like to see Paddy being given a go in the centre, central defence again. Uh, two wins in the bounce. Hopefully give them the confidence to push on and move up the table. That's what it's all about, Annette. Up the borough, she says, Connor says, Vanderberg is only 19 years old. He will certainly get better from what I've seen of him so far. I've no doubt. I've no doubt Connor will get better. As I say, he's still got time on his side. Um, but when, when you're 
one of the weakest defences in the league. You think, well, when is he going to get a, a, a chance in his proper position? If we were a solid defence um, and watertight, you would say, well, he's not getting in because we're too good. But we've conceded 15, 16 goals this season. The team who played Watford should be the team that beat the Saints. I agree with that. That's what will happen, Leslie. Uh, Ryan Gels must be regretting his decision. Chuba has had five minutes at Ajax. Would you have them back as loans? No, I wouldn't, Pamela. Uh, hey, obviously, both of them proved their worth in, in last season. Both of them were brilliant. Um, but they've left us for a reason. Ambition, more money. And I've always said that we're not a charity club. Uh, and I don't like the, the thought of players coming back. I've had loads of players in the past coming back. Uh, and for me, I just think it's lazy recruitment. I've got a recruitment team. Go and get these good players. Don't keep going for the same ones. You know, you look at um, Ben Gibson. Ben Gibson left. Uh, went to Burnley. Uh, X amount of money. Local lad came through the ranks. Made the club a few quid. Never worked. Shipped on to Norwich. Never worked. He went somewhere else. Um, and people were saying the last couple of years, get Ben Gibson back. No. Ben left because he's, he's ambitious. <coughs> he's ambitious and he went for more money. So, if people fail when they move, what are we, a charity club? Oh, come on back, you're struggling over there. We'll take you back. No, no, no. You're left for a reason. So, no. Let's get fresh talent in. Letting him way better than McNair. That's Colin says. Uh, Borough fans and John O'Groats coming down for Cardiff game. Barely, that's better, Paul. That's English. Although I'm not English. Uh, Borough fans and John O'Groats are coming down for the Cardiff game. Barely. We'll pop in and see us, Paul, in the lounge. Uh, where are we here? James Chapman says, would you change the team, Bernie, for the next game? Me personally, James, no. I want to settle team. He, he's, a, he's picked, I know some people have a go at big crooks and say, oh, crooks, he's not. If I was kind of, I'd keep the same team as Saturday that started, and then you can change again accordingly if it's not going to plan. Start the same team. Start to get a, a momentum gone, a co cohesion gone within the team. Uh, to get get to know each other's makeup, get the new players bedding in better, getting surroundings, everybody knowing each other's qualities. This chopping and change is no good, and Carrick, Carrick proved that. First came in last season, everything was hunky dory, the bed of roses, everything was brilliant. On the eye, we were great, scoring goals great. Um, and then once he started chopping and changing, we, we were derailed, uh, and we never really recovered from that. So I wouldn't change the team. Man United at home in the next round, guaranteed a full house. Hi everyone up the borough from, uh, who's that? Is it Zachary or 100? Uh, Man United at home in the next round, guaranteed a full house. Well, they would, wouldn't it? So you question, are they coming to see us or Man United? But of both, really. But Man United, have, I mean, Ten Hag, I look at Ten Hag. Um, I'll give my opinion over the over the... Well, since he arrived, to several Man United legends over the years that I've met at games. And the thing that Ten Hag, discipline I think is a massive thing. And he's right in what he does. Don't tolerate. You need discipline no matter what job you're in. But I think the great managers like, the late great Brian Clough, one of our own here in Middlesbrough. Uh, God rest him. Uh, Brian Clough, Big Sam Allardyce, Harry Redknapp, Ceramic Ferguson. Mourinho, Pep, a pack for all the qualities and all the uh, being great um, tacticians. They've got personality. I look at Ten Hag and obviously McLaren's down there as well, who was at Middlesbrough, only manager to win a trophy. I don't think they've got any personality. And I think personality is a big thing, especially when things aren't going well. You need a personality. You know, sometimes I look at Carrick and I think, is he enough to light up the room when things aren't going well? Personality is a big thing. You've either got it or you've not. It doesn't come out of book. Uh, I'm in Australia, Bernie. Missed the game. Fall in the borough. Centrally joined the squad. Um, is it Zucker that says, yeah. Australia, long way, yeah. Australia times it over there. 
obviously different times in it. Is it morning over there? Um, yeah, so I think personality and managers being um, being ruthless and 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 hard nosed and a disciplinarian is all well and good, and I think it's massive part of being a, a man manager. But you need the other side as well. You need a bit of fun and you need a bit of personality and a bit of charm. Uh, when things only go well, he get the lads out of the show. And I look at Ten Hag and, and McLaren, who's obviously at Middlesbrough, he's, he's number two, and I think, not a lot of personality going about there. I know they won the night, but they've not been too good in the league. Uh, Van der Berger's injury, that is why he is not on the bench or played. Yeah, I heard that, Chris, I did hear that. But we're just saying, despite he, but he's 19, but I still think uh, I'd like to see him in the centre-half role. As I say, it's not as if anybody's keeping them out. 90, uh, 15, 16 goals conceded. Uh, ben Gibson's still at Norwich and has played nearly every game in the season. Yeah, now, Leslie, how, when did they leave Middlesbrough? How many years did they leave Middlesbrough? Do is that one, Leslie. You don't, you don't do much. I know you don't. Get on your uh, computer, find out Ben Gibson, when he left, how many games at Burnley, Pff, probably a handful. Then he went to Norwich, how many games, and tell me how many games he's played since he left. I bet it's not a lot. Uh, Matt Clark is back soon and Watford defence is just as bad as ours. They've conceded eight in four games, one, one and eight, dear me, so that's going to be a classic. That'll get the juicy flown. I mean, talking about defences there, uh, Michael. I looked at Southampton defence at the weekend and I was delighted we scored. I said before the game, if we didn't score a goal against the, the worst defence in the league, we, we should all be thrown into the River Tees and I sort of a half meant it. But I did fancy to get a goal or two. But I could see how they've let 19 goals in. They fanny about, mess about, wrong areas, no advantages whatsoever. It's just looking for trouble. And they got it. McGree's goal came for the right back's error. He's got the ball, thinks he's only won the field, gets nicked off him. McGree passed and touched bottom corner. Thank you very much. Hopeless. I mean, I didn't play under the late great Jack Charlton for Middlesbrough. I played uh, three years in the Republic of Ireland side. Went to the World Cup with Big Jack and some fine defenders like Paul McGrath and Mick McCarthy and Steve Staunton, Morris, Packy Bonner. Um, Jack would not tolerate messing about in the wrong areas. No, even now, don't say, oh, Jack was all... Fu no, Jack was a very, very good tactician. He was ruthless. He was a straight talker, no bullshit or spin, um, and he was out to get results against the top teams. Uh, and he would not tolerate anybody messing about in the back line. Ma as I say, what Man City do, Pep comes in, changes the course, changes ideas, everybody follows like sheep. You know, let's be a shepherd, don't be a sheep. We'll just go, oh, mate, no, David Pep does all, play to the back. I like his kind of do it. I'm not very good at it. Pep does it and gets away with it because you get the best players in the world, the biggest bank account in the world, billionaires behind them. I'm sure you can do it, or he can do it, but a lot of these can do it. It's nice to watch. I like football, but sometimes overriding the pudding, overdoing it, pass, 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 but really going nowhere. And then eventually you hit it long, but well, we could have did that for the very start, rather than five, six passes and then it along. Sometimes it, sometimes I look at it, it's just like, um, Sometimes it's actually boring. Just keep position. Bernie, Ben Gibson and all comps. Burnley, 2018-20, six games, one goal. Norwich, 2020 to date, uh, 63 games. No goals. No bad with goals. The centre-half. So there you are. So 2018-2020, six games for Burnley. Six and 63 so 69 games in total since 2018, it's now 2023. Not exactly set the header early, is he? And people are saying get him back. Um, thanks for that info, uh, Keith, about your superior knowledge and, and research. Um, Andrew Keegan says, Even Bernie lads, who do you think could improve the team, whether it be Freeze or signing and giant? Andy, I don't know who's available. I honestly don't know who's available regarding Freeze. Uh, signings in January, obviously there'll be a few there, there'll be a couple of quid being spent, whether or not we've got money to spend in January is another matter, but still be looking for a centre forwards. You know, if we seriously want to try and 
Uh, if we seriously want to try and do anything this season, we still need the forward. You know, we brought in 12 lads, we keep saying it, 12 lads, 12 novices, some for teams we've never heard of. Uh, they've all signed in the main four-year contracts. So it's a gamble, and it's the future. But as I say, as fans, I don't think fans have got patience, especially, especially modern-day fans. They never had it when we played, but modern-day fans, no, they're on your case right away. Uh, saying that, the Borough fans were great on Saturday. We lost an early goal, uh, and it was a game we had to win, and the fans kept right behind the team. And, and I thought that was very good. As I say, I'm not here to preach or tell people when to boom, when to shout, but I've always said when I played and even now, um, if the team's not doing it, wait the 90 minutes or 100 minutes, get out of the way, and then you can boo, shout what you want. But after 20 minutes or at half time, booing and having to go to the players, I don't see any advantage. I don't see any, uh, I don't see how players are going to rise to that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Andy, regarding players, I don't know who's available, um, but I'd certainly be looking for a centre forward. Van der Berg came off against Southampton with a knock as a Carrick didn't rush tonight. Well, I get that, that's fair enough. Bernie, loads of fans thought when Carrick came in, uh, look at players uh, at United. Do you think it's better he has not gone there and done things his own way? And what club have you got in? No, Keith, I, I, I am flabbergasted that 12 signings and not one for Man United. We always contact at Man United. Been there for years. Manny's been coach. Top player. International player. Loads of contacts at Old Trafford, Man United. And yet we didn't get one player. I found that strange, a bit bizarre. Obviously it might be money. It might be nothing to do with Carrick. Maybe maybe he did mark eight of them, but the money might have been too heavy. Too heavy for us, the financial side. Uh, may have been out of sync with what we wanted to pay. Uh, Saeed uh, said, hi, Saeed. Uh, hi, Bernie. I remember Patrick Bamford left for Burnley, had a nightmare and begged Karanka to save him. Karanka brought him back. Yes, Saeed. And what happened? You're right in saying that. I hope I'm saying your name right, Saeed Anwar. Uh, Saeed, yeah, so what Saeed is saying... Talking about the players returning, I'm not a fan of that. He brought Bamford, because Bamford went to Burnley. He'd been a few places, had a nightmare. We got him back. He signed the same say, say, uh, signed the same time as Rudy just did. Both cost, I think it was £6 million a piece. £12 million in the Premier League. Do you know how many goals? Bamford's got a noise called uh, 19 uh, league goals under current the first time round. Second time around, £6 million quid. Premier League, him and just stayed between them as a partnership. How many they scored uh, for the January to uh, the May? One. Bamford scored in the last game of the season. So it was a waste of money. I'm not a fan of people coming back. Pallister came back, he's my mate. Wasn't a fan of that. Stewie Downing, I'm a massive fan of Stewie Downing. He came back, not a fan of that. Colin Cooper came back. Janino came back three times. It's lazy recruitment. Players leave and you want to leave. I've said it before. Your message goes, I tell you what, I'm moving out. I'm going to be a younger man, a fitter man, a richer man. She goes, it blows up the relationship. Doesn't work out. She goes back to the door, knocks on the door and says to her, the guy she's left two years ago, I, I went back. You got to let her in. <laughs> well, if you did, you're a mug. They do it for a reason. And as I keep saying, we ain't a charity. I'm very surprised Carrick not brought any young lads in from Man United, Spurs or West Ham. He must have had some contacts for Dean Wilson. Uh, some contacts, uh, them clubs, must have some good John fullback. What I'm saying, Dean, is I'm sure Carrick, my, the other clubs, yeah, he's got contacts all over. I'm sure of that. He knows some of the biggest names in the game. What with some of the biggest names in the game. But it all comes down to finance. So Michael Carrick could, could have been in touch with Three Man United players that's not got a first team game or French players told the uh, director of football, the chief exec, and they go down and do the the, the, the financial side and go, no chance, can't afford it. That's the end of it. End of the conversation. I was surprised. I was sitting in Saturday sitting watching the game. I was surprised not one player for Man United. Uh, your thoughts, Bernie, on Chuba at Ajax? He's hardly played the game. I know... 
you have to bet yourself, but surely uh, playing is better than sitting on the bench. Should have stayed at the Borough another season, just my opinion. Yeah, obviously when he goes there, he's probably quadrupled his wages. He's got a longer contract. Um, he's with a, a team that's in Europe. So he's ticked all the boxes for the reason he's gone. He's ambitious. Um, he, he must have known what he's letting himself in for. And he's willing to, to battle for his first team place, but it's going to be difficult. People have said to me, oh, he done brilliant last year, but he's not going to do it in Europe. Well, we don't know. We've never seen him in Europe. But uh, I know what you're saying. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. He might be sitting there going, you should have said it better. But do you know what? If I was at and I'd moved, and I'd been top scorer last season, would I be looking back at Middlesbrough now? One, one and eight league games. And Giles and Ramsey and that's are all left. But I'd be looking think, I wish they'd have stayed. I don't think so. I'm being honest with him. I don't think so. If Akpom was the only one to leave and all the rest of the last season were still here, then I think he would be looking regretful and thinking, do you know what? I could have stayed put. But I don't know. He, 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 the money would probably comfort his move. But as I say, the players that left, I don't think he'd be... Uh, he would come back anyway, I think about it. Uh, one game for Burnley, one goal, 80 plus games for Norwich. Well, there you are, Les, it's in two, but we've already had the stats of somebody else come in with them. So it's not a lot of games since 2018, is it? Always clear your lines. That's what was told when I played youth football, even when I played for Wiltshire. We were told, play out if you can't, if not, clear your lines. Exactly, uh, that's what you were told. Is is a different. I was, I played left back. Believe it or not, I couldn't tackle a dinner. But I played left back as a kid. Then I went left half. Then I went in the hole behind the front two, and then ended up front. But yeah, you were always told that. Don't mess about in the wrong areas. If in doubt, get it out. That's what you were told. Why are you taking chances? I mean, I've, I watched games over the weekend, and there was, there was one at Arsenal, wasn't there? Yeah, the one at Arsenal. Where, uh, when Tottenham scored 10 minutes when Tottenham scored fanning about the wrong areas these are top players international players but they're still getting caught middle of the goal 20, 30 yards for goal getting caught getting done um, it's suicidal it's mental he's wrong 80 plus game for Norwich well at least he's 60 but I'm not going to argue but even 80 86 games in uh, for 2018 Five year period Not a lot of games is it I think I played it In my first season At Middlesbrough No probably didn't Just under Andrews Townsend Is available On a free What do you think As long as he stays Injury free Andrews Townsend Big fan of Townsend uh, He does a bit of media work These days and all Doesn't he Apart from his football um, Yeah be nice, but again, what, what's his demands? What's his money? It comes down to money. Um, Paul McLean says, Momentum continues, Bernie. This is more positive than a week ago. The side wasn't changed much from last Saturday. Let's hope we can keep it going Saturday against Wolf. Let's hope so, Paul. That's what we're, we're striving for to get momentum, get a bit of cohesion, get to know each other's makeup. The more we play together, the more good results we have, the more we got the table, and the more momentum we get. And start performing better. I mean, in Saturday, for me, the apart from the result, which was all important, irrespective of the performance, but I thought in certain parts we were good. And we were sharp in, in certain parts. I mean, there was a few times we turned and passed it back to the halfway line. I that really despised that. I was always thought when you, when you got it wide in your half to play up the lines. I don't mean hoofing it over the top, up the lines. Let somebody run into it, try and get the corners or whatever. Um, but there was times like Lennon was peeling wide because the left back had pushed on and he would get it and he would look up. He had an opportunity to play up the line, but he turned and gave it back to the keeper. I don't get that. Get Townsend and he's available in a free. Chris Andrews, so he's saying it as well. Uh, Sean Dyche, old ginger, didn't want Gibson. That's just took Jed Spence to Spurs. But then this is what happens in the modern game. I'm, I'm saying here at Middlesbrough, it's happened for years at Middlesbrough. It's happened all over the country. Sean Dyche quite obviously didn't want Ben Gibson. Paid loads of money. And Sean Dyche flexed his muscle and thought, 
you can give me them because I'm a coach, but I don't have to pick them because I still got the rights of picking the team. And Sean Dykes didn't play Gibson. And Jed Spence went to um, Tottenham. And Conte went public, which a lot of managers or coaches never do, fearful of their jobs, for telling the truth. And Conte says, I didn't want him. Then he was off. He was swift out abroad. We can wish on Jesse Lingard till January. If you might have if he's gone Lingard. Uh, Dalio might be worth a look for a loan deal in January. He's been out with an injury so far this season at Man United. Yeah, Dalio, if you're thinking who's that, he played for Sunderland under Mugger. Scored against us. It was a free kick he scored last season. Great goal. A fine player, chips in with goals. He's fast, direct. Um, good in the eye. Entertaining. Went to Man United, seen him in a pre-season game. He did okay, but he's out injured. I don't. I think he's going to be surplus to requirements at Old Trafford. So that would be nice, but... Uh, Glenn Ball says, Neil Bowser is a problem at the club. Hasn't got a clue or anything. What do you think, Bernie? Be honest. Well, Glenn, do you know what? It, the, the, the former chief uh, executive was Keith Lamb, and Keith Lamb got hammered for party post. Now Bowser's getting hammered for party post. I think they've got a major part in the, the say in the club, but everything must be sanctioned by the owner. The owner employs these guys to do the, do the job they want. I don't think Neil Bowser or Keith Lamb could go out and do things off their own back and just get on with it. I think things have to be sanctioned. So I think it's a collective thing. It's a consortium of people who get involved in all these signings and money and whatever. The chairman, obviously, Steve Gibson, chief exec, director of football, Michael Carrick. Carrick said a while ago that um, they're all in it. As I say, they're all in it, but there's only one head in the block. Um, he had one decent season, should have stayed. If you Andrew Keegan talking about, I take it he's talking about Ben Gibson. 2 2 Arsenal v Spurs, yeah, it was. How good is Ange done? I can't even pronounce his second name for the, the former Celtic manager. People think, oh, it's Mick Mouth football in Scotland. This guy's came to England, not been beat as yet, has he? Not been beat as yet. Uh, and he's, the media love him, which is a good thing because the media don't love anybody. Well, they love him at the minute. I'll soon hammer him and cane him and give him it, but he, he seems to be dealing with the press well in England. His style of football, the, the Tottenham fans, whether they win, lose or draw, uh, are on his side because Conte Marino never played any football. Tottenham, the Tottenham way traditionally is to play football, pass it around, entertain. And, and Conte and Marino was smothering that style of play. So he's done well with that big inch. Spence at Leeds now. Yeah, Chris, I know he, uh, Jed Spence is at Leeds. I remember he went to Forest, played practically every game. I remember him posing on social media with a cigar, a scarf, and I think he gave Warnock it, and Warnock gave him it back via social network. It was quite funny. Um, okay, I'll read a few of these out while we've got a wee block. As I say, there's five minutes to go. Um, <clears throat> where are we here? Uh, Jill says, well done Borough tonight. Well done, Jill. We agree with that. Jed says, Latty, laughing a score sheet. That's that's good. Yeah, it is good, uh, Jed. Lee says, did you expect a lot of changes tonight, Bernie? I did. Um, I Well, I did. Me personally, I wouldn't have done that, but he obviously Michael Carrick's a coach and he did it. And it's the right decision tonight because we won. Let's see if it's the right decision Saturday. Let's hope we get a result and we, we keep my momentum going. Jeff says, how about a home tie in the cup next? That would be nice. Well, as I say, Huddersfield, Bolton and Bradford away. A duo. A home game, aren't we? Another confidence booster at last. We have some belief for the fans. This is con. Let's just say Celtic couldn't win a goldfish at Saltsley Fair. you talking about the first team that won the European Cup? Leslie, wow. Team of local lads, 26 mile radius. Didn't have to buy players up from all around the world, Leslie. Born in Glasgow, 26 mile radius. Beat Inter Milan in Lisbon, 1967. What a team that was. Um, back to reality on Saturday, Burnley to Fifrani. Bread and butter stuff. Uh, yeah, Watford, Cardiff and Sunderland, next three games, massive games. These are the big, big games now. Uh, when you played with the Borough Burnley, if you're Ryan, what was the closest you went to lifting a trophy? The closest was the Zenith Cup. I know people, some of the younger generation say Zenith Cup. Zenith Cup was a, probably a two-bob cup, but 
it attracted capacity crowd at Wembley because the opponents were Chelsea. And we went there and we got beat 1 0. Tony Dorigo scored, so that was the closest I got. Um, the other game that comes to uh, mind was uh, in the EFL, the League Cup, was uh, the two leg affair against Manchester United. It was 0 0 at Ersan Park, went to Old Trafford, capacity crowd, rain, sodden night, heavy pitch. Uh, end up 1 1 in 90 minutes and then an injury time, uh, extra time, and uh, Ryan Giggs scored the winner, hit a shinner. So, yeah, that was the nearest I got. Jane was in the Legends Lounge on Saturday, loved the chat uh, with Terry Cochran. I loved the result and the atmosphere in the lounge was superb and the stadium. Uh, Neil says, I look at Ten Hag, uh, strict disciplinary, and I heard Bruce Reich had the same qualities. Well, Bruce was Bruce Reich was ruthless. He was no nonsense, great motivator. He was a great tactician. I mean, some of the players, the younger players, were actually frightened him. He used to quake in the boots. I needed a Bruce Rear to book me up the ass, get me going. I know you meant to do that yourself as a professional, and I did that on many occasions. But if I wasn't and I was falling under the waterline, Bruce would still give me a boot right up the ass to, to wake me up. Um, love the show, Bernie. Best Borough podcast, big games ahead up the Borough. Thanks very much, Pam. Good night. Uh, before my time, Bernie endures away, Leslie. I was seven year old, man. I was watching it. Uh, Chris Chapman says, Good night, Bernie. Enjoyed listening to you. Thank you very much, Chris. Up the butter, up the butter, Bernie. Always honest and to the point. True legend in books still for sale. Oh, that's right. I went to the books. Um, I know most people probably went to bed now, but um, what it is, there's a book I do just after the pandemic. It's this book here. It's a picture book. Um, it's got my contracts, what kind of money I was on. But these were £20 a couple of years ago, right? A tenner. And if, if you you can uh, order via uh, seven dot enterprises at hotmail.co.uk, that's the word seven dot enterprises at hotmail.co.uk, you get a free 100 goals DVD. I know DVDs are out, but so are goals at the minute. I'm not scoring a lot. You see 100 of my goals on that. There's, there's chat on that, uh, interviews we. Curtis Fleming, Craig Hignett, Jeff Winter, uh, Gary Pallister, uh, Matt Proctor, a host of people. Um, and there's a chance to, I don't know where it is, oh, it's here. I'm going to, 10 people will get, I've, I've done this. I do paint work, that's my own painting first and last goal for Middlesbrough. And there'll be 10 prints uh, along with a DVD in the book for a tenner. Anyway, uh, I think it's a lot I have and Area I meant. I don't, sorry about that. I don't know, really know. I've lost my train of thought. Uh, what about players, former players staying in the, the sea after they've. What is it about players, former players staying in the. in the what? The sea after they leave the club. I think ages have now over the years. I don't know if the predictive text it doesn't really sort of a. Rhyme. Uh, happy with the win tonight, Bernie. It's for Adrian Patterson. Uh, I know they are uh, League Two, but you can only beat what's in front. I, I totally agree. Doesn't matter who we've got, we still have to win the game, and we, we did that. Um, where am I here? Jack, I see Matt Hughes, Bradford's manager now. Did you ever play against him for Man, uh, Man United? Well, I didn't play directly against Matt Hughes, Jack, but uh, obviously I played in a time when there was. There was uh, Lee Sharp, Ryan Giggs, Brian Robson, Paul Lentz, Brian McClare, uh, Peter Schmeichel. Uh, there were some great players for my United. Louis says, Bernie, I see you are selling books, giving away something free. What is it? It's a DVD. I've just mentioned it there. Um, Terry says, tonight, opponents, Bradford, uh, what was your memories of the playoff games against them? Yeah, younger viewers, I'll finish with this. We played against Bradford, two leg affair. Um, brought them back to Essen Park. I think it was a draw down there. Trevor Senior scored. And then on the night, uh, Gary Hamilton scored, did a fantastic dance, wiggling in his arse. Then I scored, and then we progressed into the two leg final. It was the very first playoff final. Wasn't at Wembley. Uh, we beat Chelsea here at Essen Park and Teesside 2 0. They were in the top division, we were the division below. So they were the equivalent of the Premier League of the second division. Um, and we beat them 2 0 against all the odds. And then we went down there, they scored the goal after about 16 minutes, Tony De Rio scored, backs against the wall, our defence that day, Pallison, Mowbray, um, Pears, Parkinson, Cooper were immense, as were the midfield. Um, and eventually we got promoted. 
uh, into the top flight, which was some achievement, considering a couple of years before that we were bankrupt. Um, Rob says, uh, a measly, one measly one in eight league game, what does Carrick have to do to get us to bring consistency? Well, tonight doesn't do us any harm, but the, the team will obviously change again. We have to play with a settled team, week in, week out, play players in the rightful position, uh, and that will make us a better side. How much better, I don't know, but uh, it must make us better than what we have been uh, the previous seven games before Saturday. Leo says, enjoyed your sound, or your soonest interview, sorry. On your Total BS podcast and the footage on YouTube. Yeah, Graham Souris interviewed oh, several years back there when he was at Borough TV. Travel to his home in London. Souris, three European Cups he's won. He's a true legend. He was voted Borough's greatest ever player. Great guy. Love him on the Sky Sports. Well, he was in Sky Sports. Chopped it. Probably gets sacked because he says, uh, what was it? It's a man's game. And then the other week there when he was doing the Scotland game, I laughed because he was ready to use the terminology handbags because there was a scuffle on midfield and they pulled away for it and he says, oh, I have to be careful what you, you have to be careful what you say these days. Oh, the bollocks. But anyway, love Sooners. If you want to watch it, you can watch it on uh, my YouTube channel or you can listen to it on Total BS Podcast, free of course. Um, but it's worth listening. Eh? Um, Tam says, Bernie, you came from a rough council estate in Glasgow. Tam tells me he's Scottish. Um, any other players went on to make the game? Well, the two biggest ones were Eddie and Frank Gray. Eddie played for Sunderland and a few other clubs. In, no, sorry, Frank played for Sunderland with Eric Gates, my old pal, Sol C. Gates. Eh? And, and uh, Eddie was one of the Leeds all-time great players. Played European Cup games and won Cups and Scottish International. Uh, there was a guy called uh, Tony McBride. McBride. Uh, he was destined to be one of the best players. Jock Steen, who was a manager of the Lisbon Lions in Glasgow Celtic. He says that this Tony McBride from Castmilk, the state I was from, uh, was going to be better than Jimmy Johnson, but it didn't materialise because he hit the drink and lost control. Um, the other guy who came out of uh, Glasgow, Castmilk, my estate, not a footballer, a singer, Jerry Cinnamon. You must have heard of Jerry Cinnamon. He was doing things on YouTube, and all of a sudden he's selling out to 68,000 uh, crowds, whatever. Right, anyway, this is it. Up the Borough Bernie, always honest. To the point, true line, but yeah, you're happy with the win tonight, Bernie. Um, if you were a player today, Bernie, and were at your peak, how much do you think you would be worth? And what would your weekly wages be, Sahid? Sahid, what? Well, I cost 25 grand. I'd probably be worth about 30 grand now. That would be the, my transfer fee uh, for one club to another. Uh, wages, well, if I saw my longer was on 32 grand, I would want 52. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. I'm back again on Saturday. I'll be on at half five. I've got a charity ball, the, the Teesside Foundation. My mate Tony Wedley, he's a big, well, he's the main man in it. And there's a do on for to raise funds for the charity Teesside Family Foundation, which all the money and uh, goes to people in this area who are in need of it. Uh, so I'm going to that. So I, I usually do it at six when it's away. You know, I'll do it at half five Saturday after the uh, Watford game. But anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll read the sponsors out again because they're very important. Galaxy Blinds, Utility Solutions, Advanced Utility Solutions, Cornerstone, GRS Installation, Dovecot, Cleveland Systems Engineering, Ultimate Windows, Ocean Light and TGM Cars. Thanks each and every one of you. Well done, Middlesbrough. Uh, and good luck for Saturday against Watford up the borough. Up the borough. If I can get it off.